Hello, we're back. Uh, episode two, Crush, has just been rewatched uh, for I think the fourth time now. I was wrong about it. anyway. Um, and as one of you know my inspirations uh, said, uh, damn, it feels good to be back because like you know that that's how I feel right now. Shout out Jack Wilder. Um, I I was like I uploaded the two like the one morning and then I like this whole the past like day or two I've just been like dude I want to do this again. I'm actually like really like excited to do this. Um, not much has like changed visually right now, but I actually plan on since I'm like writing notes as I go along to put those notes like on the screen, like what I wrote um, as I talk about them and uh, you know etc. Um, and I have writ way more shit written down for uh, this episode than I did the last one, so uh, I'm just gonna talk about it. So yeah, Heartstopper episode two, uh, Crush. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm spoilers as fuck. Um, don't watch if you haven't seen the show. Like. Please don't, just go watch the show, you know? Um, <laughs> so the first thing I have written down is, oh my god, is that he's scrolling through Charlie's Insta, giggling at Charlie's silly jokes in the pictures, etc. Like, yeah, dude, like, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> but that's like, yeah, like, obviously. And then I said, Nick's guilt about the bullying from other people that Charlie received is so wholesome. Like, Nick is perfect and didn't even do anything either, but feels so bad for Charlie. And like that's like a theme that I really love about their relationship and as it develops where it's just like Nick is constantly feeling guilty about bad things that happen or have happened to Charlie even though like he isn't even the one in the wrong there you know um and Nick is constantly like really trying to let Charlie know like dude this is not your fault like you're perfect dude like um because Charlie you know doesn't even recognize that a lot of the times because of a lot of that trauma he's gone through you know um, so I, I, I love the, this whole type of thing. Again, even though it's not even like, it wasn't even like they were with each other when that happened there. It was just like, you know, he saw the depressing like Instagram post and was like, oh yeah, like, he felt bad for Charlie. And like, had like, it almost like, you know, it was like regret or whatever, even though he wasn't even in the wrong, uh, you know. Um, then I said, this show inspired me to put a gay wallpaper on my phone now that I get pride. And I'll talk about that later though. Um, so first of all, I will, like, in a future, uh, video of, like, a late later in this series, I will I'm going to very much expand on what I mean by that, of how I, like, understand pride more than I ever have before. Um, but first let me, like, let me talk about that wallpaper shit. Um, because of that, I, like, hold, let me show- my phone's right here, dude. This is my phone. This is, like, the, this is, like, a default, like, gay wallpaper on an iPhone. I made that my wallpaper. My wallpaper has been Bayonetta for so long, and now I'm just like, no, I get it. Because, like, this show has taught me a lot about, like, being gay, queer, anything like that, um, that I didn't know, and I didn't even think I cared about until I watched this show, where I was like, oh, like, I understand why people, like, are proud of being gay. And it's not just, like, because to me before it was like, Oh, I'm just gay and like who cares? You know, I was very like very quickly accepting of that and myself in that aspect. So like to me, my whole life it was just like I don't give a fuck. Like that's just part of me. Like who cares that much? You know. And then I would always tell people I'd always be like, like yeah, like nobody would choose this shit. Like I don't want to be fucking gay, but like here we are. So I'm not tripping about it. You know. But now it's kind of like I get it. Like because like I feel like this show has shown me as it relates to my own life that like I am as happy as I am now and as comfortable with my am now, like in everything, all of like the success and my own happiness and everything that like all the positive things are because I'm gay at the end of the day. And like, I'm not, that's not even like, like bending hoops or like jumping through hoops or like bending whatever to, to get to that conclusion. It is like a lot of the things I've gone through have put me, I've been in those situations because of my sexuality and it has led me to be even like stronger and like better and smarter and everything and in every way that I again these things are hard to see in the moment where it's like oh yeah this is shit but like I would always have these full circle moments and be like well I'm kind of better because of it all and I'm glad that I am gay you know even though I hadn't thought that for a long time despite accepting it so quickly and that's why I kind of like I'm much more open to like even though I would do things like that before like I have I have I have a little pride pin that I used to wear sometimes I have a little bracelet and I have like some other things but like I never really cared that much to express it like that and I still don't like express it a ton but now I'm just like no I get it like I'm very much like open about like I'm proud to be that even though like before it was just kind of like there and like I didn't care about it you know and I think that's really cool you know 
Um, I said, oh my god, Nick is so cute. He's like, are you okay? And Charlie's like, yeah. And Nick is thinking, I don't believe you and I want to make sure you're good. Because like, you know, Nick over here caring about Charlie and Nick is like, you okay? And Charlie's like, yeah, like, don't worry, like, I'm fine. And Nick is like, are you okay? <laughs> um, over, over the text. And I, I love that about their uh, dynamic. Um, then I said, Charlie be stressing about the text. Yeah. Yeah. And Nick be stressing too, because, like, who doesn't? But, like, Charlie will be sitting there just, like, tripping about what he's going to send Nick. And I get it. I, I get it. I am not as much of a person that will, like, leave a person on red for 10 minutes while I think about and redraft tech. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, very, like, within, like, a minute or two, if I still don't know what to say, I'm gonna just start typing, and then sometimes, like, I'm gonna just send some- I don't like leaving people on red like that. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm not like that in that way, but I get the stress about, like, texting like that. And then I said, bro, Charlie, just fucking send a response, bro. Like, don't trip, you're making Nick worry by leaving him on- leaving him on scene, thinking about what you want to say. Yeah. I get it, though. Like, <laughs> you know. Then I said, Nick is so fucking respectful. He's like, we don't have to talk about it, but if you want to, we definitely can. Like, I'm fucking here for you. Yeah. Fucking raw. Let's go, Nick. <laughs> this is like one of the only ones that's not in all caps. I said, oh my fucking god, Ben is back, y'all. And then I put a sad face. And I said, oh my fuck, again, back in caps. Charlie's saying sorry again, and Nick is like, dude, don't be sorry. I will unfriend this bitch ass hoe because you're actually cool. Fuck that dude. Like, don't talk to him, you know? Again, like, Charlie did, like, can't fathom that at this point, where he's like, I wouldn't, like, Charlie's like, I'm never gonna ask someone to not be friends with someone because they were an asshole to me, but Nick, like, is like, dude, if that person's an asshole to you, I'm not gonna be friends with them either. I'm not gonna be nice to them if they're an asshole to you. Like, you are what I care about, you know? And I love that. I love that. That's, that, that's the type of energy I really like. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just said, oh my, OMG, with a lot of Gs after. Surely there was a reason for that. That I said, even though Charlie has low self-esteem and thinks he might never find or be deserving of true love, he still has fucking hope, and that's like me. Because even in my darkest moments, I never had 0% faith that anything happened. Yeah, even in my most depressive, my most everything, where it was like the darkest everything, I was still always clinging on to some form of hope that like, I would find love or someone would love me or my situation would turn around or anything, really. I've never been like 100% out of hope. And Charlie's like that too, where it's like, even though he's gone through trauma and he always feels these anxieties and these insecurities, there's a part of him that knows that like, or that believes that like, all hope is never lost, you know? And I, I very much am glad that that is written into Charlie's character because it is, um, it is very realistic to actually, like as a possibility to actually lose all hope, but he, he doesn't seem to, to ever truly lose all hope. And I'm very happy about that. The heart emoji, kill me. Yeah. And he smiles, grah. <laughs> I'm so silly. And I said, yes, we love Tara and Darcy. I swear the lesbians are constantly eating up my boys. These girls serve in so many ways. Yeah, so obviously, like, the girlies have their own issues, but, like, the girlies are a bit ahead in a lot of ways, too, where I'm just like, god damn, the dudes are getting eaten up by the girlies over here, like, in their relationship, you know? I'm not gonna talk too much about that now, because, like, again, we're just meeting these characters anyway, and there'll be so much more to say in future videos, but I love those girls. Tara and Darcy, they're fucking awesome, and I, I love uh, a lot about uh, both their characters, you know? LMAO, Charlie, rereading yesterday's me messages, that's so fucking real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. Lamau, clock that T. You are the authority on working out who is and isn't gay. Fucking true. Yeah, again. Not much to say there. And then the teacher's line. Wow, being a teenager is terrible. <laughs> that was funny. I like that line. I love how he refuses to distance himself. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, don't be stupid. I can't, I can't just distance myself from him. Like, he's a friend. Like, I, I can't just not to, you know, like, I love that. How he didn't, he, in that moment, he didn't even consider that, like, the possibility of maybe I should just distance myself from him. He's like, fuck that. <laughs> I said, I said, don't worry, girl, I can barely draw stick figures, too. <laughs> Offering her the monster candy thing, uh, or whatever, and her accepting is so cool, because I read somewhere that you should do that if you meet someone and they offer you something. I read, I don't know where I read that, but somewhere was, like, if some, like, if you're meeting someone and they, like, offer you, like, a candy or a bite of something, 
Like, unless you have a reason, like an allergy or like an actual reason not to, just say, take it or accept it. Like if someone's giving you something, just take it. Even if you're not gonna eat it, even if you're not gonna use it, or if it's just a bite of something, I think I read like, psych like psychology wise, like, it will make the other person feel more open to you if you accept like the, this like tiny tiny little gift or offering they're, that they're giving you. So that's what I thought of uh, when I saw the scene at the lunchroom with the the three girls. You know, these girls are so cool. I fuck with them so heavy. Yeah, he said, "Come through, then meet my dog, bro." Like, how can your fam not like animals? <laughs> yeah, he's like, your family doesn't like animals. Well, come to my place then. Fucking meet my dog. Nelly will love you. <laughs> that's awesome. Um. <laughs> LMFAO, the sister is back, let's go! <laughs> LMFAO, she's so real! <laughs> Have fun at Nyx! <laughs> she just gets the vibe every time. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, hesitating to ring the doorbell, don't worry bro, I get you, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Nelly, let's go! And then I said, and then Nick says, you got a haircut. He notices instantly and says it looks great. I'm like, oh my god. Cause like, yeah. Like again, like the, like in situations like these, and again, this is not like necessarily a queer thing where it's like, if you're interested in someone, you'll notice like the little things very quickly usually. The, like the tiny things. Again, like, in the, and haircut's like usually more noticeable, but his, his haircut was very like, very mild, like small difference. But like, if even if there's like super small differences, it's like, if you're eyeing someone, you'll tell. And then Nick says, like, no, no, it looks good, you know? So that was cool. This <laughs> is El Mavio, not Mario Kart 8, bruh. And Charlie always serves Nick. <laughs> oh my god. It's funny. He says, you're a proper little nerd. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I said, not maths. Girl, that's an L for Brits. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. That There's a lot of British terms I'd be heavy fucking with, but maths is not one of them. Sorry. And it's snowing, bitch. I'ma talk about my first snow, snow experience in 8th grade. Yeah, so this wasn't as magical, but like, it wasn't for the snow aspect of it. Where it was like, I'm living in Tucson, Arizona, bro. And it's 8th grade. On Valentine's Day. And it starts snowing. And everyone just goes outside and fucks in the like plays in the snow. I was gonna, I was gonna say fucks with the snow, but then I said fucks in the snow. And like, dude, we're in 8th grade, nobody, <laughs> nobody's fucking with this. <laughs> Excuse my, uh, me speaking before I think. Um, so we all just like played in the snow and, and, and stuff, you know, it was it was great. On Valentine's Day, I'd never seen snow before that day in, in eighth grade. Um, magical, wonderful, beautiful, amazing, talented, brilliant, incredible. Um, snow, my heart is melting. Uh, talk about uh, the queer music and maybe talk more about how I've listened to Dover Beach 80 bajillion times since my last upload to this YouTube channel. Oh yeah, well I'm not even going to go into detail about the, the Dover Beach, um, surrealism I've been having by listening to that song on repeat for several days non-stop only that song essentially um but like again it made me think of like because I, I kind of already had this thought before like as I was watching the show and before where it's like I would imagine in shows like this where like there's like like a lot of queer individuals involved and a lot of people working on it they probably do take a lot of the music and the art and everything from like mainly people that are on the queer spectrum or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if literally every song in this show is by like a queer artist or something. Maybe not. But I also was thinking more of this when I heard like a Conan Gray song and other things. I was like, yeah, no, they're probably just using a lot of music from like gay artists or whatever, which is cool. Um, because yeah, I mean, not only does it fit and it's applicable and it's good music, but then like, you know, people like me, I went and listened to Dover Beach over and over and over again. And then today on my walk, I went and listened to Baby Queen's first album. And I really found a lot of songs from that album, and I loved the album, and I thought I found a lot of songs from that album that I really liked. Dover Beach is still number one <laughs> for me. But I'm like, oh wow, I found a new artist that I really fuck with, uh, you know, because of this. And they're, they're doing that by helping out a lot of uh, gay creators, queer creators, um, by just showcasing their music on this show. And I think that's awesome and powerful, and I love that they do that. Um... He's taking pictures of him in the snow and like keyboard mesh, and now snow angels together and more pics. Yeah, I'm, I'm geeked. There's still 15 minutes, bruh, how? I, I really do feel like, even though the episodes are 30 minutes, like I have so much to say and I'm thinking so much, and I'm like, they feel long as hell, which is really cool, even though they're only like 30 minutes. Um, the mom hard, the mom hard reads, bruh, you seem much more yourself around him. And he's like, do I? And she's like, you do, like Nick's mom. I'm like, yeah, the mom doesn't know shit, but she's a mom, so she gets the vibe. And he didn't even see it in himself. He's like, oh yeah, I am more myself around him. The mom has no context, but gets his feelings before he even really gets it or understands it. Yeah, you know? Like, he doesn't even realize, he's like, oh yeah, I, I kind of am more myself around this boy. 
like he didn't even realize that the, but the mom was like yeah you, you are and he's like oh <laughs> i am like i i, I really like that interaction in, in that scene i said not gonna lie this girl had to grow on me but she definitely grew on me and her character is great i love you think she's cool too honestly i don't remember the girl's name right now this character uh, it's the girl that you know is crushing on nick uh, early in the show and then she's the one that will later be like i'm an ally <laughs> that girl um at first i didn't really like her because like not only was like she crushing on nick but she seemed like i thought her character was gonna go in a different way but then like very quickly into the show like she redeemed herself in what i thought she was going to be like and she's just really cool and i end up really liking that character so even when i was watching the show i was like oh god this girl when, when she would come on screen at the beginning but like very soon at like into the series i was like no i, I like her he's standing on the sidelines just happy to be there to watch his boy yeah lmfao tau in the gaze later in the gaze later in the show not knowing shit about sports yeah i get it and again that's not like to all gay people but like in some gay friend groups None of us know what the fuck is going on, like, even though we're at a, a sporting event or something, you know, like, <laughs> we're just there. <laughs> Who knows what's going on? Who cares? Tao is shook! <laughs> yeah, um, when Charlie was telling him about how he thinks Nick might not be straight, yeah. Tao needs to mind his own goddamn business, period. At least stop being worried and try to protect your friends like that. Sometimes they don't need or want you to protect them, bro. Come on. Yeah, and, like, that really is kind of, like, how it is. It's like, I get it's all out of love. But, like, Tao be, like, meddling and, like, fucking up more things and creating more problems and while he's trying to fix problems, you know? Um, people like that frustrate me because it's like, no, I get it. Like, you're not evil, but, like, dude, you're causing more bullshit by intervening when it's not even like that. Like, dude, like, stop trying to protect me or, you know, just go away. Like, we, I don't need you to do that for me, you know? I said, and I said, bro, Charlie, don't listen to Tao. It's a rumor, bro. <laughs> And I said, Nick just playing rugby, I spit a little, Nick just playing rugby and Charlie is getting all depressed about the rumor. Two different realities. Tell the story about my plane. Yeah, so not going to go into details about the story, but I had an insane fucking surreal, like massive, like psychedelic, not psychedelic as in like I was sober, but like it felt like the most insane shit of all time. And it happened to me flying home from California on a plane a couple weeks ago. And while I was on, while I was all going on in my mind, I was like on the plane looking down out the window, and I was like, "There's someone down there not knowing what I'm going through, and maybe they're just looking up at the plane and being like, oh, a nice plane.' And they have no idea what's going on in this plane or in my mind at all, like the craziness that's going on in my mind. And then inversely, when I would look down, I'd be like, "I don't. There's so much shit going on down there that." is so out of the realm of what I could fathom right now because there's so many people, so many different lives. And I had, it was like a full circle moment today on my walk. I looked up at a plane and I was like, wow, there's people in that plane going somewhere, you know? And I was like thinking about what these people on this plane might be doing and how about there's this complete disconnect between me and someone on a plane on the way up there that we don't even know about and we'll never know about. But like, there's so many stories of people's own, people's own stories just walking, flying by each other that, you know, we'll never l learn, but they're, they're happening anyway, you know? And I think that's beautiful. Nick just playing rugby and Charlie- oh wait, I said that already. Um, I can't just go up to her and ask her who she fancies. <laughs> Love that word, the British word. I can't just go up to her and ask her who she fancies. <laughs> love that. British W there. Um, this whole French do you have a boyfriend scene is so real, and I love how the girls give cheeky responses to L to imply things. Yeah, it's because, like, obviously, like, the girlies are, like, not really, like, they're more accepting of their relationship and, like, being about, uh, publicly about their relationship. And I love how they go about doing it. It's because even, like, later we learn that Tara has more, like, trouble with people criticizing them and, like, coming to terms with calling herself a lesbian took her a while, etc. Um, but I love that, that they're just like, they, they know that Elle is chill and like Elle has shown to be chill. So they're just going to be like cheeky until she either gets it or she asks, which Elle does ask like later in the episode, you know, not this scene of the thing going on in Charlie's mind. Oh my God. And I put a sad face. Yeah. I love these scenes, even though like when they're like this, it's like sad, but it, it's real. It's like, Charlie is like, oh my God, this is what's going to happen. And then it's just not, it's just something way more normal. Like he's going through so much extreme positive and negative and then reality is just you know more normal than that and i said see ella's so chill she just asks and they are like yeah we are dating you know like that's just it like I, i'm not saying Elle has nothing to be worried about because like it is scary and being in a new school and like her own trans experience and everything like that um but like with tara and darcy she doesn't have anything to be scared about you know about how like 
you know, like they, they get they get her already and they're chill with her. Um, and Elle is like so chill. Elle is like just a cool as fuck person, you know? Um, and I think she just, she comes to terms with that about herself more quicker in other ways than a lot of other characters in the show. Um, we're almost done. We're on like the, the last page, by the way. Um, I, the, the drum scene, Nick is genuinely trying but his ass. And then he takes, and then Charlie takes his hands and serves the beat for Nick. And oh my fucking god. Yeah, cute as fuck scene there. This is just cute as fuck. Uh, bro, the scene with them on the couch watching a movie and Charlie's asleep and Nick touches his hand is the realest fucking gay experience of all fucking time. Like, straight people will not understand why this type of thing is so much gayer than it is a straight people thing. Uh, than straight people go through, and even a lot of queer people might not get why it is, but that shit is so fucking queer coded. Um, I'm gonna, like, tell a little story. Or, like, not a story, but here's why I believe this. Because there's a lot of things in this show that made me realize that, like, not that this is like an exclusively gay experience, right? A lot of the things in the show, it's like, yeah, like straight people do this shit too, right? But I don't think people realize, so a lot of people realize that a lot of these experiences in the show happen much more often in queer relationships. For example, this thing where, in this scene, right? Where like Nick reaches over while Charlie is like sleeping right next to him and just like touches his hand and is like feeling like, oh my God. And then he just like, re you know? Um, very similar situations have happened in in my life, especially with my first boyfriend and how like we kind of realized that we wanted to start dating each other and also, you know, in, in my longer relationship that was like on and off for a while, it was like how it's and how that one started. It was kind of like as a gay person and as someone that like wants to be friends with someone of, you know, the same gender, like if I'm a guy, like, I'm not always wanting to be boyfriends with a guy, you know? Sometimes I just like being friends with a guy, right? And that's chill, and that's all it needs to be, right? But then sometimes the line gets the lines get blurred in my own minds of, do I like him? Do I just want to be friends with him? Would I prefer to date him, but I'm okay with just being friends with him? Am I willing to lose my friendship because I like him? And, the, and like, it's, it's always hard to tell, because sometimes you can't even ask them. Because, like, in this case, like, dude, Nick's not even out to anyone. Nick doesn't even know if he's gay, you know, like, like that. So it's not easy to, you can't even just straight up ask and communicate like that. And that's what makes this hand thing in a lot of, like, gay scenes and, like, a lot of gay experiences so much more relevant. Where it's just, like, there are, these are, like, much, like, smaller but safer ways of, like, testing the waters with people that you're interested in. In ways where it's, like, he might not know what's going on, I might not know what's going on, maybe I do, maybe he does, but like, it's too scary or almost even impossible sometimes to communicate that directly. So things like this where like, he'll kind of like reach for him or like touch him very slightly and like that's it. Like that happens so much more with gay people because especially around the culture of like, we don't know who's crazy or straight, or doesn't want to be like, you know? But then when, you know, in Char like in my perspective and like Charlie's, it's like when I'm falling for this dude and he's being so sweet to me, and I would love to be in a relationship with him, what am I gonna do, not test the waters, you know? Even though I don't want to ruin the friendship, but it's like, you know? But the thing is, that what I loved about that scene is that Nick was the one doing that to Charlie, you know? Nick was kind of, but even though like, it's kind of different because like Charlie was just sleeping and Nick kind of just wanted to like touch him to like, you know, like just real quick on the hand, you know? Um, but things like that happen so often, where it's like, you need to figure out how, how to test the waters in ways that are discreet or like less obvious. And sometimes that process takes a long time. I've seen people, myself included, go months and months and months and years of doing this like hand touchy thing or just like things like that, where they're just trying to figure out if there's even a possibility, you know? Not even that they like me back, that they're just queer at all, you know? like. It could take a very long time of those small interactions, but I think interactions like that are so fucking important. And this type of thing will come back in later in the show. I promise it will, uh, and me talking about it. Um, and then uh, Nick says to Charlie, you look so cuddly like that, and then he hugs him. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the sister. I don't think he's straight. <laughs> Dude, the sister's so goaded. She's so raw. The group chat is so funny and probably gets so lit for these characters. <laughs> yeah. Nick is geeked looking at Charlie's Instagram post of being in snow and now looking at their pics. Bro. And I said he zooms in on his face. Ah! <laughs> um, yeah. Fucking cute as fuck, right? 
Uh, the song saying, why am I like this, right, in the background song, when later they say to each other, why are we like this? It's so, like, it's so cute, like, that was their thing, that's like their thing later, they're like, why are we like this, you know? And the song in this episode is like, why am I like this? But then it becomes, why are we like this? Love that. Uh, the whole scene with the internet and the am I gay on Google is so real, even though it's silly, and a lot of people have no clue. Um, and I know because I've seen the show already that this will get expanded upon at the very beginning of next episode, so I'm gonna like hold a lot of my comments about it. But I do want to say uh, at the end of, because that was the end of this episode, that this experience, while I cannot entirely relate to like googling am I gay to you know, for, um, it, it's real and it happens to a lot of people, especially like younger people or even like anyone really, where it's like, um, it's silly and I know, and like the results are even sillier. Like these BuzzFeed quizzes of am I gay and they're asking you if you listen to fucking Britney Spears and Madonna, you know, and shit like that. Um, it's all, it's really silly and it's fucking, it's stupid, you know, but it's a, it's a genuine experience that a lot of queer people go through, even in not that uh, exact way, where it's like people will kind of test their own waters on, at home on the internet to themselves. Like if it's am I gay or if it's like looking up gay things on the internet, where it's like they don't even know, but like they kind of want to do the research and that's what the internet is there for in a lot of ways to like have the anonymity of learning about something like that that you don't quite feel ready to talk to literally anybody else in your life about so yeah i'll talk about that more in the next video but i really do want to say that even though a lot of people probably do think it's silly and that like yeah am i gay fucking google quizzes are, are fucking ridiculous that scene and that experience is much more valid than I think a lot of people give credit for. And I'm very glad it exists, and especially like what we will learn about the characters later in the show. Um, it's, it's just very fucking valid and real, and I'm glad, um, I'm glad they did that, you know, for Nick. Because especially for people like Nick, you know? Because I did shit like that, even as someone that relates to Charlie more. Uh, not, not in the way that I was asking the internet, am I, am I gay, right? But there was a lot of things that I did on the internet like that, where I would just like Google certain things because I didn't want to ask anyone at the time, you know, I wasn't ready to like be like, hey, like, is this normal or, you know, and it's, it's much, un again, the internet is so dangerous in the ways that like, it might not give you the answers that it should, but it's still a thing people do. People will just go on the internet and look up things. And I'm very glad that that was reflected uh, well in the show here. Um, so yeah, 27 minutes, um, pretty good feeling about all that. Um, I said I want to do one a day um, and I would love to but that's probably not gonna happen. Um, I don't know if I said this at the beginning, but season three trailer dropped today. I haven't seen it yet, and I can't wait to watch the season three te teaser that dropped today. I'm very fucking excited for season three. Um, and I have some more plans of what I'm gonna do after this series is over uh, for Heartstopper and for other gay media. Don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with those plans yet, so I'm not gonna uh, say them, but there's gonna be more, and... Um, I'm really excited to keep doing this because I love talking about this. Again, like even if I'm just talking into a void, that's validating to myself enough. And like the possibility that maybe someone is watching and like can relate to or learn something from what I'm saying, just one singular person learning and, and being validated by my words, that's enough for me to keep doing it on top of the fact that I already like doing it anyway. So um, thank you uh, for watching or listening or anything. Um, and I have so much more to say still, and I will be back, and I cannot fucking wait to talk about episode three. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> Alright, um, that's about it, so, bye.